Well, well, um, let's see how this goes. Um, I don't understand how, okay, so I'm three minutes in, and dude is saying that he has never camped in Yosemite. So I'm a little curious how this video is going to go, because he's talking about one to five day hikes. How do you accomplish a five-day hike without camping? Like, I just, I, I, I have to see how this goes. All right, let's go back to the beginning. Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. Today, we are going to look at some of my favorite Yosemite trails and which ones that I would do depending on how much time I had in the park. For those coming to Yosemite for the very first time, planning your trip can be very difficult. There is so much to see and so much to do. How can you possibly choose between all of the amazing destinations, the iconic features? The waterfalls, the rivers, the creeks, the mountains, the rock. Yosemite just has so much the to rock? offer, it can be overwhelming, especially Wait, for- the rock? Are you talking about El Capitan? Like, what's the rock? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> I can't even. All right, let's see. Someone who maybe is only going to get one shot at the park. And depending mm -hmm. on how long you're going to be there, that may be the only chance you get to see things, and you don't want to miss anything. Now, I've got a book right here called 45 Must-Do Hikes in Yosemite. It is over 420 pages long. Something like this may or may not be helpful to you, but this is the best guidebook that I personally have seen. I like it a lot. But again, for planning a single trip to Yosemite, even if it's three or four or five days long, something like this can just add to that overwhelming feeling of, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where to go, I'm gonna miss something no matter what I do. So that is what I'm here to help you with today. Okay, now okay. just a little bit about me. There I was. I have done all top 15 trails in the All Trails app. I've done more than half of the kinds of hikes I'm gonna be talking about today in that book I just showed you. And in fact, this is my trail map. You can't see all the trails that I've done because some of them aren't right here in the valley. Mm -hmm. But I have been to pretty much all of the major spots. And so I think I've got a pretty good grasp now on what I would do if I had to start all over and I only had a certain number of days. But I'm gonna be telling you what I would do if I could only visit Yosemite one, two, three, four, or five days. Now, to help you make sure that you're not wasting your time by watching this video, I do want to kind of go over my thought process very briefly before I start telling you what trails I would do. And by the way, if you want to skip any of this, that's fine. If you look down in the description of the video, I have a little table of contents, and you can just jump to whatever section of the video you'd like to see. First of all, I break down a Yosemite visit into four different kinds of activities. One of them would be being a tourist. And I don't mean any judgment there. The first two or three times I went to Yosemite, I definitely was in full tourist mode. And basically by tourist, what I mean is someone who just wants to get into the park, see the big things, get some pictures, and get back. Which is totally reasonable because there's lots of different lodging arrangements in Yosemite and um, you could be handicapped and um, just explore the, the the meadows and and look at the sites around you and go to like the Iwani Hotel and the Yosemite Lodge and um, Curry Village and stuff. You could absolutely have a wonderful vacation of just hanging out in the valley. I don't know why he's sort of positioning this as a negative thing because the majority of people who go to to Yosemite actually visit it in this way and they might play around in the Merced River a little bit depending on what the water level is like like August is great because the water levels are pretty low and so the um the stream isn't all that high right like the pole right out 
Another thing I'm not going to be spending time on is camping because number one, I haven't spent that much time camping in Yosemite by design. I've only been out maybe three or four nights. But I just don't know that much about camping and accommodations and things like that. So if you're looking for how to plan your trip... as I don't know how you can possibly tell us about a five-day hike if you've only camped three to four nights. I I'm just very confused about... I, I, I gotta see where this is going. As far as overnights go... There's just not a whole lot I can do for you. And speaking of overnights, if you're looking to backpack through Yosemite, that is also not what this video is about. Because Ooh. when you're backpacking, you tend to go very different places than where you would if you're doing a series of... Then how do you have five-day hikes? How do you have five-day hikes? And you're saying you've, you're not really camping, you're not backpacking... How do you have uh, descriptions of five day hikes? Day hikes and then returning to the valley or a hotel or something. So that is actually more what this video is about. I'm looking at very full days of hiking, but these are all the kinds of activities that you should be able to complete in a single day. Oh. Now, I was not kidding when I said that Yosemite can be overwhelming when it comes to planning your activities. There is so much to see and so much to do. I mean, if I only had one day ever in Yosemite, what would I go see? You're automatically going to exclude some pretty important things. So one thing I tried to look at is what would be the most bang for your buck as far as kind of the bucket list items, like the reason that people go to Yosemite. They come to see Half Dome. They come to see El Cap. They come to see Yosemite Falls. There's just certain things you really don't want to miss. And so I tried to orient my hike choices around seeing quite a few of those major iconic pieces. At the same time, I didn't want the hike to just be about the destination. There are some incredible destination hikes in Yosemite, but I tried to save some of the longer ones that really kind of save their payoff for the end for multi-day trips. If you're only going to be in Yosemite for one or two days, you probably don't want to be spending most of that day hiking through a forest just to get to the end to see one thing. So in my initial days, I tried to really hit the major scenes, but I also wanted to make sure that the hike itself would be incredibly valuable. The next thing that I considered was the difficulty of getting on the trail and getting to where you're going because there are some areas of Yosemite, some things you can do in Yosemite that require a permit. And often those permits are on a lottery system. And basically, if you have advanced far enough in your Yosemite planning to have come to some of those, you probably don't really need this video because you're already in full planning mode. So I tried to pick hikes that were pretty much guaranteed sure things that if you come to Yosemite, you will be able to do this hike, which means that I am excluding winter. There are basically three main routes that lead to hiking trails in Yosemite. One of them is Tioga Pass, the road that you see way up here in the green, and it is on the north side on top of the valley. And there are a number of excellent hikes that begin from Tioga. However, they are typically very long, they take a long time to get through, and they're dropping you down to the top of a feature at the north side of the valley. The other road is Glacier Point Road, and that's the green one down here. This is on the south side at the top of the valley. Same story as Tioga, lots of good trailheads. But the main thing to note about both of these roads is that as soon as the snow hits the ground, those roads close for the season. And the season can be about half a year. So make sure you check the Yosemite website for conditions during the time that you plan on being there because if those roads are closed, you are limited to the valley hikes, which are all gonna be in this about 20 mile loop and Oftentimes, many of those trails get closed down because of ice and snow, rock fall, and that sort of thing as well. So there is kind of a prime season for hitting your... Technically, nothing is ever closed down. They, they will stop maintaining trails. But if you are an experienced rock climber or ice climber or whatnot... These trails are not technically closed because this is federal land. So it's available to all of us at all times. 
It's just that they stop maintaining things at a certain point of the year, right? So it generally is closed somewhere around October through about Memorial Day is when those roads are closed. Because that's about when it starts snowing. And they're not maintaining the roads anymore. They're not maintaining the trails. They're, um, it's just a matter of maintenance, basically. Like, for instance, if you wanted to hike the one-mile trail, which they have not maintained since the 70s, you could technically do it. But it's at your own peril, you know? Um, you'd have to be an experienced rock climber because there's been a lot of rock slides and stuff that have happened on that trail. The one mile trail is behind Curry Village and they stopped maintaining it um, after so many people fell off of it that it just became a liability for them. So they just didn't want to be responsible for that part of the park anymore. But uh, the reality is, it's federal land. You can go wherever the hell you want. It's up to you and your ability and whether or not you have rock climbing ability and ice climbing ability and everything else, right? If you want to get to the trails way up on the top or way up on the bottom. And then my final consideration was whether or not there was going to be overcrowding at the trails. Now... For some of you that are used to hiking way out in the backcountry, pretty much all of these trails may feel overcrowded to you. But there are some places where the roads actually take you almost all the way to the feature. Those are typically going to be very clogged with people because you're going to get everywhere from the local campers to the drive-in tourists to the hikers, even some backpackers hitting certain areas. Yosemite is kind of the Disneyland for hikers, but... It comes with the problems of Disneyland as well. All right, so having said all that, let's get to the hikes. So what if you only had one day in Yosemite? And by the way, I'm defining day as dark to dark. I'm not talking about someone that rolls into Yosemite at 10 a.m., messes around for a while, and then tries to get out and catch dinner in a local town. I am talking about a full day where you wake up in Yosemite or you get there super early and you either go to sleep in Yosemite or you don't leave until it is well past dark. If you only have one day in the park and you want to see all the big cool stuff, I wouldn't expect much hiking to be done. Rather, what I would say to do is the Valley Drive and pick up a bunch of little short hikes to some really amazing spots along the way. Now, no matter how you enter Yosemite Valley, you end up in a generally counterclockwise loop that takes you all the way up to Happy Isles, which is where some of the major hikes mm -hmm. begin, and then back down. Nope. You're not allowed to drive up that far unless you have a handicap placard. That part of the loop is cut off. You cannot drive into that section of the park unless you have a handicap placard. Um, they have a shuttle that will go into that section, but that part of the park is closed to traffic. There is a parking lot um, on the right side just north of where that loop connects back in. Um, and you can park there and then hike up, but no, 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 that part of the park is not, no, <laughs> you cannot drive your vehicle unless you have a handicap placard, um, on that part of the park. I'm just, I'm just telling you straight up. It's been like that at least since the 80s. Okay. Around again and back out of the valley. If you do that drive, one of the first things you come to is Bridal Veil Falls. And this is a beautiful little okay. trail. Wait, wait, it's up. an incredible... Yeah. Bridal Veil Falls is way the hell on the other side of the valley. 
Bridal Veil Falls is like the first feature you come to when you come out of uh, the tunnel, the tunnel view, the very famous tunnel view. Um, Bridal Veil is way the hell on the other side of the valley, so I don't know why he's jumping around like this. Iconic waterfall. This is the waterfall that you see in those amazing tunnel view pictures. And you can basically walk right up under it. That is a good, quick little hike. Again, it will often be very crowded, but it gets you right back to your car, right back on the road, and you can drive to your next destination. Personally, I would probably go ahead, go up around the loop and start heading back, and I would go for the lower Yosemite Falls hike. This is a gentle, meandering path that will be very crowded, but it's got some beautiful creek views, and when you end up on the Yosemite Falls Bridge and you look up, you can actually see Lower Falls, which is the third section of Yosemite Falls, once you're done with this short hike, you can hop right back in your car and head off somewhere else. Now, once I've made that loop, and you could probably do that in maybe two or three hours if you're stopping off to see the waterfalls, I would then drive to the other end and head up Glacier Point Road. This is gonna take you to Tunnel View, so you can, again, park the car, get out, walk a few feet, snap the amazing tourist picture, get back in the car, and keep going. Once you have driven most of Glacier Point Road, you This is a very ambitious plan to do in a single day. I'm gonna tell you, to try and do like three small hikes, They're, they are small, they're small, but you're also supposed to enjoy the valley at the same time. And then you're going to stop at Tunnel View and take pictures there. And then you're going to drive to Glacier Point. That's like a fucking hour drive. This is an ambitious plan for a single day visit. End up at a fantastic trail that takes you to Taft Point. Taft Point, in my opinion, is the greatest mileage per view ratio that you can do in Yosemite. For a short hike, you end up on top of Yosemite Valley looking straight down 3,000 feet to the valley floor. It is an incredible experience, and it is one of the shortest hikes for one of the greatest payoffs in Yosemite. After that, if you want to take Glacier Point Road the rest of the way to Glacier Point itself, you will get some amazing views of Half Dome. And when you get to Glacier Point itself, you can stand in line for a bunch more of the major tourist pictures. You can pick up some food in the general store that will get you going for the rest of the trip back. For me, that would be an incredible one day. You're going to get to see all of the major features of Yosemite from the valley, and you're going to get to see all of them from the top. You will see Bridal Veil, vale, you'll see Yosemite Falls, you'll see Vernal, Nevada. Basically, with this itinerary, you aren't going to miss any of the iconic Yosemite features, and it's going to be a long day, but you can do it. Okay, so what if you had two full days in Yosemite? In other words, you've got one whole day, you spend the night pretty close to the valley or even in the valley, and then you've got the entire next day as well. How would I change things? Basically, I would still do a lot of the stuff that I did on the first day, especially as far as the valley drive. What I personally would change is that while I was doing the valley drive, I would do one more stop. On the way back out of the park, you can actually hike to the base of El Capitan. I found this to be quite amazing, to, to stand underneath a 3,000 foot high piece of granite and literally be able to put your hands on the base of the rock and look up is amazing. It's only going to kill about an hour, maybe an hour and a half if you dawdle like I usually do. It is a worthy addition to the valley loop hikes. The difference would be is that I would spend a lot more time in the valley and I would make the upper part of the valley my second day. But instead of going to Taft Point and Glacier Point, I would do a big loop that takes you not only to Taft Point, but to Sentinel Dome. This is a great loop hike, and it is going to take a bit longer. But the amazing thing is that when you get to the top of Sentinel Dome, you get to see Half Dome, like you would from Glacier Point, only without the crowds. So not only do you get to climb up on top of something high, but you get to go around another big loop, and you end up at... Let me give you something. Okay, it's no longer marked on the map. 
But um, when you hike up to Mirror Lake, which he hasn't even mentioned as part of his itinerary, there is a side area to the left as you're walking up the um, boulevard, if you will, um, that used to be called the Indian Caves. It used to be marked. It is no longer marked. You might be able to find something about this in like old old lore there is a place called the indian caves so if he's like hey go to the base of el capitan why like why like if if you're if you're exploring el capitan you want to go over to like the bridal veil meadow like park on the side of it and get your binoculars out and uh, watch the rock climbers because you can see all kinds of rock climbers going up El Capitan or across the valley on um, I think it's it might be Sentinel Rock one of them is Cathedral Rock and the other one is Central Sentinel but point being is that what you're looking at for those two locations is to just watch the rock climbers but if you really want the experience of like experiencing like going in the caves and feeling the granite and all that bullshit um you're gonna want to go off um it's not far it's like a hundred yards off of the road and um it's called the Indian Caves, but they have, they don't mark it anymore because I think bears hibernate there. And so they don't want to point it out anymore because they're afraid that you might have like a bear encounter. Half point and you get to have that experience as well. Now for many people, that could be a full day right there. However, if you get done with the loop and you are still wanting to see some more, no reason not to run down to Glacier Point, take all those pictures, get you some ice cream, hop back in the car. That's going to be a pretty solid second day. And because you That's spent the first day ride. really exploring the valley and the second day really exploring the top, not only will you see all of the things you would have seen on the first day, but you're really going to get to experience them in a fuller way. All right, so what if you had three full days to spend in Yosemite? Well, this is where I would add in the most popular hike in the entire park. Do the valley loop with all the little hikes, come up top, do the Taft and Sentinel Dome loop, and then third, you're going to go back down into the valley, drive all the way up to the far east end, and then you're going to do the Vernal Falls, Nevada Falls, John Muir Trail loop. Now, this is an incredible hike, and it is the... Vernal Fall, Nevada Fall, Panoramic Trail. That's not actually part of the John Muir Trail. The John Muir... The John Muir Trail goes in the back country. Ugh. It's so frustrating to watch people act like they're experts on this bullshit. Um, these are single drop falls. So um, they are called Nevada Fall and Vernal Fall. And this is the Mist Trail which is part of the panoramic trail, okay? The John Muir Trail is up above that. Ugh, I can't stand it. And honestly, if you're gonna spend three days and you wanna do a big trail, go all the way up to Half Dome. Get in the lottery, get your permit, and go all the way up to Half Dome as long as you're not scared of heights, right? most popular hike in Yosemite National Park. The reason I did not include it on day one or day two is that although it is an incredibly beautiful hike, seeing two amazing waterfalls, getting some great high views above the creek, the trouble is you miss almost all of the iconic features of Yosemite if this is the only hike you do. This trail does not feature El Capitan. It does not feature Half Dome. It does not feature Yosemite Falls. 
it's really a whole oh that's good that's good he's got the children's map you guys he's got the children's map that they used to hand out at like the the restaurants in yosemite back in the 80s other part of yosemite if you notice that the valley here kind of goes up and then turns south and wraps around over here and it's this turn that you see when you are on top of glacier point it's in this turn that this hike that I'm talking about is. And again, it is an incredible hike. The features that you see, the rock, the waterfalls, the creeks, absolutely beautiful. You get to say that you walked on part of the historic John Muir Trail. No, You're going to stand right on top of both Vernal and Nevada Falls. There's bridges, there's big creeks. Not unless you get into Yosemite, Little Yosemite Valley. You don't get to say that. But one of the things, one of the great things about the panoramic trail is that you get to see a waterfall that is not visible at the valley level at all, which is called Illouette Falls. It's only visible when you do that trail. It is an incredibly beautiful hike. You're just not going to see many of the major features of Yosemite. And for someone that is only going to be in the park for a limited time, personally, I thought it was more important to see the big sites and to get up really high and get to see the valley from the top than it was to just go on one of the prettier hikes that misses a lot of those things. Now, before I go forward to what I would do on days four and five, I do want to briefly mention two incredible hikes that you might consider if you are a little bit more advanced of a hiker. The first is the Half Dome hike. You might be surprised to discover that I do not recommend trying to climb Half Dome if you have a limited amount of time in the park. Number one, it's on a very aggressive permit system. They only allow 300 people a day to get up to the top of Half Dome. Now, to some of you, that might sound like an amazingly large number, and it is. That's another reason I'm not super fond of this hike, because you're going to be standing in line, literally, with hundreds of people trying to get up to the top of Half Dome. But the other trouble is, the permit system is on a lottery. And if you don't plan very carefully, you can ruin your trip by thinking you're going to get to go to Yosemite and climb Half Dome and then discover that you are not allowed to. The other reason I don't typically recommend this hike for someone with a limited amount of time is that it is a very long hike. There's no quick way to climb Half Dome. In fact, most people make it a two-day backpacking trip. If you don't, most people are looking at a sun-up to sundown hike, which means you're going to be carrying a lot of food, a lot of water, and you are not going to get to spend a whole lot of time up on top of Half Dome. The other thing I don't like about this hike is that when you're on top of Half Dome, guess what you can't see? <laughs> you have no good views of Half Dome from the top of Half Dome. Another thing that I don't really prefer about this hike is that the best part of the hike is the mist trail to the John Muir Trail hike up Vernal and Nevada Falls. So once you've passed the falls, you're basically just walking through the forest until you begin your ascent of Subdome and then Half Dome. So as far as the views go, strangely enough, you actually see a lot more on other hikes. Now, if standing on top of Half Dome and getting that awesome hero shot out on the visor is a bucket list item for you, then by all means, go for it. I'm just not including that hike in this particular list because I think it's a little bit more advanced and it's the sort of thing that I would say most people should just plan on saving for another trip. Another incredible hike, and I mean incredible, like if this is last dying wish and I only got to do one hike for the rest of my life in Yosemite, it would be a string of trails that make for a pretty amazing loop. You begin by going up Four Mile Trail, a trail that you don't often hear that much about, but which is actually one of the greatest Definitely. payoff trails in Yosemite because you literally get to see the valley from the ground all the way to the top. You have incredible views of Yosemite Falls where you can actually see all three sections at once. You have incredible views of Half Dome and you climb all the way to Glacier Point. But then you keep going down the Panorama Trail right over the top of Illilouette Falls. You take that all the way down to the top of Nevada Falls, and then you have a choice of either taking the John Muir Trail or the Mist Trail back down to Happy Isles. Now, from there, you have another three-mile road walk to get back to your car, 
but that is an incredible trip. Again, this is an advanced hike and not the sort of thing that I would typically just tell someone new to Yosemite to do. Do you see how he just said that though? There's a, there's a three mile um, walk back to your car. It depends on what time you get down to the valley after you've done this particular hike. Um, you might be able to just top on a shuttle and, you know, like right over to Curry Village or something like that. But um, what he's talking about is the fact is you cannot park up by this area. You cannot drive up by this area. So I don't know why he insinuated that you can actually drive around this area. You cannot do that. You, you can't. You cannot do this. The closest parking lot is um, across from um, Upper Pines Campground, right? And um, it's it's in the forest, but it's not. It, I guess it's three miles away. I guess is what he's saying. I didn't know it was that far. It didn't seem like it was that far to me, but okay. But if you are a pretty solid hiker, check out the stats on that hike and maybe consider swapping it for the Mist Trail John Muir Trail loop because you're going to get just about all of that anyway and you're going to get to see some amazing other sites. All right, so let's say that you have already knocked out all of the hikes that I recommended for the first full three days in Yosemite. What's next? Well, at this point, I would say that you have definitely given full coverage and due diligence to all of the major iconic valley features of Yosemite. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's time to go do something a little different. And for day four, hands down, no question, what I would recommend is Clouds Rest. The Clouds Rest hike is considered somewhat challenging, but it's not super far. It's probably going to kill the day, but the payoff on this hike is, in my opinion, the greatest that Yosemite has to offer. Even ignoring everything you're going to see on the way, when you get to that spine and you walk up these boulders with a two or 3,000 foot drop on either side of you, and you top out on the summit and you look back down Yosemite Valley and you see Half Dome and you see Sentinel Dome and North Dome and El Cap, it is an absolutely incredible experience. I don't think there is a better view in Yosemite National Park than that from the top of Clouds Rest. Again, a little off the beaten path, but the shots you're gonna get from there and the experience of climbing that spine, to me, that's worth the full day right there. Now, what if you've taken a whole week off and you've got a full five days in Yosemite? You've seen all of the iconic features from both the bottom of the valley and the top of the valley, and you've seen the entire valley from Clouds Rest. What could you possibly do to finish off five days? What I would recommend at this point is actually getting away from the valley and doing something way on the eastern side of the park. Many people don't realize just how big Yosemite is. There are entire mountain ranges included in Yosemite National Park that many people have never even heard of. And going east really takes you, number one, along a beautiful road that shows you some major features of the park that you don't see from the valley. In fact, you can drive all the way to the other end to 395 in Nevada and you can see Mono Lake. On the way, I would recommend climbing either Mount Hoffman or- I'm fairly certain Mono Lake is actually in California. I've been there before. The 395 runs up California. Ah. Uh. These Yosemite videos are infuriating, you guys. Or Mount Dana. These are two very different hikes. Mount Hoffman starts off as more of a typical hike through the woods. It's steep, and when you get through the tree line... You literally could have been telling them to go to Tuolumne Meadows, or to go to the Mariposa Grove, or White Wolf. Like, things that are actually in Yosemite. You know, you could have, you could have been talking about the giant sequoias. Okay. 
you're climbing in some kind of bouldery rocks, but it's got a really fun summit and allows you to look over to the other side of the mountain range and see a bunch of lakes. You get to see Half Dome from even a higher vantage point. If you want something that's a little bit more like a mountain climbing feel, Mount Dana is great. It's the second highest mountain in the park. It starts right at the road. It's not a terribly challenging hike, but it does take you above 13,000 feet. So if you have never experienced that kind of altitude, that can be kind of fun, challenging, um, and possibly pain-inducing. But the top of Mount Dana is amazing. You can look down over Mono Lake. It's a great hike. Pro tip, if you get to the other end of Tioga Pass, there's a gas station down there that sells unbelievable fish tacos. Uh. So those are my recommendations for what I would do if I had one, two, three, four, or five full days in Yosemite National Park. I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, would you mind giving it a like? And if you haven't subscribed to Backcountry Pilgrim, click that bright red button down there. And also click the bell if you want to know when... I'm caught. I'm caught. I'm caught. YouTube keeps suggesting these videos to me, you guys. I really want to get back to Yosemite, but, like, I don't want to be told about what my experience should be from people who clearly don't know how it goes. <laughs> it's so infuriating.